Yo, yo, YouTube, what's up with your boy, Sports and Fitness Rants? I'm back, guys. Click that like button, subscribe to my channel. What's up, guys? I'm back, man. I'm back. Got another great video for you guys, man. Another great video. More facts, right? We're going to continue with the hit. We're hitting you guys with facts, man. No lies here, right? Pass the word, guys, to, about my channel, man. I'm spitting straight facts. You guys know I'm spitting straight facts, man. And I appreciate all your guys' love, man. All your guys' comments, all the support. I appreciate all that stuff, guys. It really means a lot to me, man. But in this video... I'm going to try to keep this video brief. You know how I do. I ramble on. I'll try to keep this video brief. I just want to make a couple points. And in this video, I want to talk about Michael Jordan never playing for quote-unquote stats. Right? Michael Jordan never played for the stats. Never. And I don't know if you guys have noticed in my videos, a lot of the videos that I do trying to debunk these lies or try to combat some of these things that are being said about Michael Jordan, if you've noticed in my videos... I don't hit you guys with a lot of facts or, or, or stats or numbers or these accolades. Because I told you, to me, that's not why I am a Michael Jordan fan. And that's not why I felt that Michael Jordan was the greatest of all time. It was always the eye test for me. It was never about the numbers. I didn't know how many scoring tiles Michael Jordan had when I was a kid. I didn't know how many points he scored in, in an individual season. I didn't know how many steals tiles he had. I didn't know any of these things, guys, until I became older. And then people started to, you know, I started to do research into this stuff. But growing up... That wasn't what, you know, made me a Michael Jordan fan. It was the way he moved on the court, the things he did on the court, the way he made me feel when I watched him, right? His swag, the charisma, his beauty. That was why I liked Michael Jordan and I watched his game. Now, obviously, yes, he was also amazing at basketball, right? But it wasn't about the stats or anything like that for me, guys. And when we think about Michael Jordan, guys, in a nutshell, all he wanted to do was win. That was all he wanted to do. He want, if you think about, I remember uh, uh, seeing an interview with him as a rookie, and they were asking him about coming into the NBA and you know what he wanted to accomplish and things like that. And he literally said, "I just want to come in and contribute to the team, and I'm hoping that one day the Chicago Bulls will be respected like teams like the Philadelphia 76ers and the Boston Celtics." That's literally what he said, guys. It was always about the team. It was never about, oh, I want to come in and win five scoring titles. I want to come in and win 10 scoring titles. I want to come in and win five MVPs. Or I want to come in and lead the league in this and lead the league in that. He wanted to win championships. He wanted the Bulls to be respected. He said he wanted the Chicago Bulls to be respected. The actual team. Not him. Because it was always about the team. I told you guys the other day. If you go through Michael Jordan's entire career, from the beginning to the end, he would constantly, constantly talk about the team. It was always about winning and the team. It had nothing to do with his scoring titles. It had nothing to do with his steal titles. It had nothing to do with his PR. It had nothing to do with, with his scoring average. It didn't have anything to do with any of those things. He wanted to be known as a winner and all-time great because he won. Like Magic Johnson, like Larry Bird. They were winners. And he wanted to be like them, winners. So when we think about Michael Jordan, right, and we think about him not playing for the stats, Where's the obvious connection to that? It's right there, guys. He allowed a rookie coach in Phil Jackson to come in in 1990 and bring in Tex Winner's triangle system. He allowed that. A lot of people forget that. A lot of times I've heard people say, oh, well, Michael Jordan played for the greatest coach of all time. He played for Phil Jackson. That's why he was winning. Wait a second here. Wait a second. I don't remember Phil Jackson winning anything as a head coach. I don't remember Phil Jackson even being a head coach in the NBA before that Chicago Bulls team. This wasn't like Phil Jackson was coaching for years in the NBA and won a title or was, you know, bringing teams to the conference finals or the NBA finals every year and then he went to the Bulls. Phil Jackson had never coached a single game in the NBA. Not one single game in the NBA. He was a rookie coach in the NBA, guys. And Michael Jordan allowed this man to come in, bring the system in, take the ball out of his hands to lower his stats, his quote-unquote stats. And Michael Jordan allowed him to do that because Michael Jordan was what? He was coachable. A very underrated aspect of great players, a very underrated aspect of Michael Jordan in particular. We've heard his college coach, coaches all over the place, the USA basketball coaches, Michael Jordan was very coachable because he wanted to get better because he wanted to win. That's all it came down to for Michael Jordan. It was about the winning. So when Phil Jackson came in and brought the triangle system in and he brought his Zen mentality and all this weird kind of stuff, he was different, Phil Jackson, right? Michael Jordan didn't try to get him fired. He didn't try to get him chased out of there. 
He allowed it. And he said, you know what? We're winning. We're starting to play better here. This might work. You know what? If I got to sacrifice five points a game or three more points a game, if I'm, if I'm not going to average 35 points a game, I'm going to average 32. That's all right. That's okay. No big deal. If my, if my assist numbers are going to go down a little bit, that's okay. It doesn't matter. We're winning. So all these numbers, Michael Jordan wasn't concerned about. He allowed that to happen. <clears throat> so when we think about that, we think about the triangle system. We think about Michael Jordan allowing a rookie coach come in, taking the ball out of his hands, essentially. Making it more of a team, you know, flowing offense. What guys are moving here and there and, and they're doing different things, right? You would think, right, that Michael Jordan, you know, because this is what people try to make it seem as if. They try to make it seem as if Michael Jordan only cared about stats or that Michael Jordan was playing for stats and that his stats are based off of him chasing stats. You know, because now they'll try to compare Michael Jordan's stats to other players' quote-unquote stats and they'll try to make it a negative. When we try to explain to people, even though Michael Jordan's stats are all, all worldly, he sacrificed a lot of cumulative stats and his averages for the success of the team, for winning. And that was a large reason why Michael Jordan was able to go 6-0 in the NBA Finals. To me, that was a large reason why. Because he was able to uh, uh, adapt and, and adjust his game at different times, right? Because he played in that system. Michael Jordan's game was very fluid. He could play off the ball, right? He could play off the ball. He could play down in the post, right? He could, he could run the point guard position, right? He could set screens. He could do the give and goes. He could make back cuts. All these things. Michael Jordan's game was very, very fluid, man. You could never, you know, paint him into a corner. He could do anything and literally anything and everything that he wanted to do. And him playing in the triangle offense, I think, just enhanced him. It helped him master the game of basketball because that's what happened to Michael Jordan once the triangle system came in. He figured out how to win the game. You know, uh, B.J. Armstrong made a comment in the Last Dance documentary about Michael Jordan figuring out how to win. And everybody else was just playing the game, but Michael Jordan figured out how to win the game. He figured out how to control momentum and set things up and, and you know, and take over games at certain points in the, of the time. He mastered it. So when people try to say that, you know, or they try to make it seem as if Michael Jordan's stats weren't that great, which we all know that they are, but people will try to make it seem that or they'll try to, you know, talk about stats and, oh, Michael Jordan this and that. Michael Jordan never played for stats. The stats that Michael Jordan has came in the process of winning, winning, winning. That's all it ever came down to. From the minute he came in the league, wanted to make the Bulls playoff. Michael Jordan literally said when he came in the league that as long as I'm here, we will always make the playoffs. That was, I mean, that was what he was saying coming in as a rookie, guys. I told you it had nothing to do with any personal stuff. It had nothing to do with scoring titles or scoring a certain amount of points or having this many assists or leading the league in steals or making all defensive teams. It had nothing to do with that. His immediate thought was always the team to come in and make the Bulls contenders, that the Bulls would make the playoffs every single season as long as he had something to say about it. And guess what, guys? He did that. The Bulls always made the playoffs when Michael Jordan was there. They never missed the playoffs with Michael Jordan on the team. Not one season. Not even when he broke his foot. The man forced them to put him back in at the end of the season, and he ended up winning enough games at the end of that season to get in the playoffs, man, because that's what Michael Jordan wanted. He didn't want no top five draft pick or anything like that or tank for a high draft pick. That was never Michael Jordan, man. Never played for the stats. Never played for the accolades. Those things just came to Michael Jordan. And that's what a lot of these guys need to realize. Play the game for the love of the game. Play it for the fans, right? Play to win, and all those other things will come to you. It'll happen. It will happen. You'll get recognized. You'll have the stats. So shout out to Michael Jordan, man. And when people try to say that Michael Jordan played for stats or they try to make it seem like Michael Jordan's stats aren't that impressive and they try to gloss over his three-peats and things like that, it's ridiculous, man. A lot of guys now these days play for numbers. They play for accolades. Michael Jordan never played for the accolades. He played for the, for the love of the game 
He played for the fans. He played for us, guys. He did. And he played to win. He played to win. Why can't we understand this? Why can't people get that aspect of Michael Jordan's mindset? It was about winning. It never mattered all the other stuff. Yes, we use those in conversations and debates. And yes, Michael Jordan's stats and accolades are very impressive. But that's not why he played. His stats could have been even more impressive if he only cared about stats and accolades. His stats could have been even more impressive if he didn't want to play in the triangle system because he didn't want to win and he chased Phil Jackson out of there. That's not what he was about, though. He was about winning above all. And you guys know that. And that's why you guys love him. And that's why I love him, because he didn't play for numbers and accolades and for recognition. He played to win. That's what he wanted to be known for and recognized for winning, being a champion of the highest level. You guys know it, man. Michael Jordan was on some other stuff, man. Never cared about them stats, man. Shout out to Michael Jordan, man.